Good morning, Monday morning. No, it's too early. My week's coming up. I do apologise for my absence last week. I made a late decision to take a week of annual leave and uh, I just reflected it was a really busy season coming up and all our systems were up and running for the year and I just thought I need a break to be able to run well for the next season. I didn't have the perfect break, I still had some things on, but it was something, it was, it was lovely to see our youth pastor Toby McGregor ordained a deacon on Saturday and, and uh, look back in action today, we've got a parish council meeting on tonight, what a difference a week makes. I might be wrong, but it just feels like it was light a week ago when I was getting up to do this at 6am, but now I look out the window at 6am as I start my preparation and it is pitch dark. Now today we're back in Acts chapter 9 and our last time together we were looking at Jesus meet Saul on the Damascus road and the exchange between Jesus and Saul, Jesus says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? He said. I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. And Saul has been the guy who's been going around killing, supervising the death of Stephen, persecuting the Christians. Now, today we're reflecting on how the initiative in saving Saul, saving this man who's been so against the gospel, is all from God. Verse 10, there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. And the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, here I am, Lord, he said. Get up and go to the street called Straight, the Lord said to him, to the house of Judas and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, since he's praying there. In a vision, he's seen a man named Ananias coming in and placing his hands on him so he can regain his sight. And Ananias is shocked by this. He says, Lord, are you sure this is a good idea? Lord, verse 13, I have heard from many people about this man, how much harm he's done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has the authority here from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. And the Ananias is thinking, I'm a guy who calls on the name of Jesus. I'm a guy who goes about preaching Jesus. And Saul is a guy who goes around killing people who preach Jesus. And you want me to go and have a conversation with him about Jesus? I mean, this is stretching the faith of Ananias. It, it just seems crazy to Ananias for him to walk straight up to Saul and say look I'm here to tell you about Jesus but that's what the Lord says to do and so we are seeing here this is so clearly an initiative of the Lord Jesus look what Jesus says next the Lord said to him verse 15 go this man is my chosen instrument to take my name to the Gentiles the kings and the Israelites this is the plan of Jesus and he wants Ananias's help in enacting this plan of commissioning Saul to take his name to the Gentiles, kings and Israelites. Now, remember from the start of Acts, um, the gospel, uh, the rock hitting the pond, the gospel rippling out from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria to the ends of the earth. And uh, now the Lord Jesus says, Saul, Saul's going to be my guy to do the next phase of the work, to do the ends of the earth work, to take my name to the Gentiles, the kings. Now, the Lord Jesus says, that's what Saul's going to do. I'm going to, well, I'm going to save him and I'm going to use him. This is Jesus' plan for the remainder of Saul's life. Now, just think about that. Jesus has a plan for the remainder of the, the life of the person he saves. Could Jesus have a plan for the remainder of your life, you having been saved? My life, me having been saved? Um, when I come to Christ, and I... I start to trust Christ and I, I, um, I stop living for myself. I start to live for Jesus. And um, I might have small ambitions, but see the massive difference in perspective here. It, it's not me coming to Christ. It's God miraculously involving himself. God chooses to save Saul. God meets him on the road. God shakes him out of his arrogant state to get his attention. God blinds him for three days and God has a plan. He's going to use Paul to take his name to the Gentiles, the, the kings, the Israel. And I find this confronting because when God saved me, I thought this is nice. All sorts of things in my life improved. I started going to community group, to Bible study. I started having deeper conversations with the people. I started to care about others. They started to care about me. But actually my view was quite small minded. It was really just about me. Here is the Lord's bigger view. I'm going to use you on a bigger canvas. And so I just say, challenge, what's the plan for you the rest of your life? And might it be that the moment, from the moment you were saved, God had a different plan, a bigger plan? And I don't think God stops to say, oh, is this particularly what you want to do? You might have a dream, a big house, Western Sydney, whatever. Jesus has a plan, go. 
This man is my chosen instrument to take my name to the Gentiles, the kings, the Israelites. Why don't you say with me to Jesus, Jesus, how would you have me serve you? What would you have me do? How would you have me live? Father God, I thank you for the Lord Jesus, that he saved us, that he initiated action in our lives to save us. And pray that we might be open as we hear the voice of God to be used in whatever way to serve however you would want in honouring Christ Jesus. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us on Daily Bible Time today. Look forward to your company tomorrow morning when we really talk about suffering for the gospel.